are the best strategies to get from Legacy of Destruction. Big dog, I've comprised a tier list of every single strategy that got support in Legacy of Destruction and also the hidden support that you didn't know about to give you the low down on is it worth it or are we coping yet? Coping is my best friend chat and I gotta tell you, if we coping we 10 toes down, this deck is strong, just not against some of the others. Now, big dogs, this tier list is going to be a little bit different as we are only using the things from Legacy of Destruction and we're gonna be using a different value system that I will talk about in a second. But I really wanna know if there's other types of tier list you wanna see, let me know down below in the comment section. But also, there's some strategies that I missed let me know about those as well, and I'll be sure to include it on the next tier list. As you already know, buy the merch, and let's jump on in. Okay, big dogs, so the criteria for this tier list is simple. I will be ranking these strategies based on the probability on how successful they will be coming out of the gate, but I'll also be talking about the new support and what do I think about those particular cards. And another layer to add to this tier list is that where I put these cards is basically where I think you should invest. Best available to has potential are the strategies that are either incredibly good or strategies that can be really, really good into the game later on. I think for takes a really good pilot, you're gonna have to be a dedicated player of that strategy to be able to succeed. And with Copium, you're not necessarily coping unless you think the strategy is gonna be tier one or anything. But these are the strategies I will reserve for people that maybe wanna have fun with these Yu-Gi-Oh strategies or don't care about the meta. And again, big dog, this is a full Legacy of Destruction set. Any strategy that I thought got support from that set is in here. Let's go ahead and start off with Ancient Gear. Big dogs, I am not coping when I tell you Ancient Gear is the best deck in the universe. It's Earth Machines, baby. Ancient Gear actually did get some cards that put it in the correct direction. I like that Ancient Gear Dark Golem not only allows you to get other Ancient Gear cards, it also can get you Gear Town, which allows your deck to be able to plow a ton of machine monsters to your side of the feet. There's also Ancient Gear Commander and Ancient Gear Tanker. Both of these cards are really good at getting you additional summons and Tanker even allows you to destroy your gear town to boost up your monsters. Overall, this deck is based on OT Kang, but unfortunately doesn't have a ridiculously strong going first board. Personally, I would put Ancient Gear at has potential. I think Earth Machine players are going to love that this version is going to have a little bit more direction and a lot more power to it to be able to break opponent's board. Next, Archfiends technically did get support. Waste the Light Sworn Archfiend is an Archfiend. Konami, why are you doing this to us? Personally, as a boomer, I remember when we had Archfiend cards like Terror King Archfiend. And even though the deck did change from its chest like features, we still got Archfiend Emperor, the first Lord of Horror. Those cards, crazy. These cards, only Archfiend by name. I think that Archfiend is ridiculous, but not in a good way. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in Copium. This strategy literally has received zero support, but will continue to get Archfiend cards because it is a translation from Demon, and I, I guess it kind of fits. Centurion. Now, Centurion is going to be the first of three strategies we're going to be talking about from Valiant Smashers. If you guys haven't caught on to the Konami trend, Konami will release a deck build set introducing three different decks and then later on give it some support inside of a main booster set that makes the strategy a lot stronger. Over the past few booster sets, they have made some decks incredibly good. Vanquish Soul, Pearly, and Rescue Ace were all part of that trend. And the cool thing about Centurion, unlike those other strategies that I mentioned, it has seen a little bit of success without its support. Now with Centurion Arcolia, it allows you to be able to play Dimension Shifter and place those cards back into your Spell and Trap card zone. Shifter good, Archfiend Calamity bad. I think because of this, as well as their new monster that allows you to summon itself to the field as a level eight and their new spell card, it adds much needed consistency and monsters to the field. This strategy has potential to be really, really good. I guess you could say it's a new century for Centurion. 
I know I'm not funny, but I'm trying here. Chimera. Now you won't see any new Chimera cards inside of Legacy of Destruction, but you will see a card called Nightmare Apprentice. This card adds much needed consistency for the Chimera strategy as it allows you to be able to get illusion monsters from your deck to your hand. But that's not where the deck stops in support. Diabelle's The Original Sin is another crazy card for the deck that forces your opponent to set cards before activating them and then when they do, allows you to destroy cards on the field again. Holy crap, Chimera with another floodgate? Who would have thought? I wouldn't have. Now there still are a few problems with Chimera, but I think that the future is bright with this strategy. I'm gonna put it in has potential. Keep in mind, anytime that we get illusion support, it's typically going to be Chimera support until we get more illusion support to branch out of the Chimera support. It's like with Psychic's Worm and Cyber Swore when they first came out, except Chimera has potential to be incredibly dangerous extremely quick. Now, I just finished talking about Diabelle's The Original Sin, which is holy mama. I know some people that would sin to get this card. I'm just saying. The Snake Eyes deck also gets Snake Eyes Diabelle Star. This card places monsters that battles with it into the Spell and Trap Card Zone as continuous spells. It could also easily summon itself from the Spell and Trap Card Zone giving Snake Eyes another dynamic. To be honest, Snake Eyes is still one of the most ridiculous decks in the game and adding another dynamic, I'm gonna go ahead and say best available. What I wouldn't do is pay an arm and a leg for the new support for this strategy, but it's a nice little wrinkle that you can add. And it makes cards like Snake Eyes Dramatic Chase a lot stronger. I think it's an excellent move. Now, unfortunately, Dinos did get support. Dino Vader Duckus allows you to be able to summon this monster to the side of the field when there are two or more dinos on the field and then allows you to tribute a level four or lower monster to summon a dino from your deck. Tribute, tribute. Konami, you had one job. Why did you say tribute instead of destroy? Are you trying to stop me from popping the baby? Dino Vader Duckus literally should not be considered a support. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in copium. Now, dinos themselves would 100% be takes a good pike lead, but if you think that this card is going to further dinos, no. You already need to be in a winning situation, two dinosaur monsters on the field, to summon this card, and then you have to lose cards to potentially gain cards. It's just not it. Earthbound did get support. Earthbound got a new Zoma the Spirit-like trap card, which allows you to summon it to your side of the field as a continuous monster. Since when has Earthbound ever did that? Yep, this is 100% copium, guys. It's already bad enough that Earthbound is struggling as an archetype. This card absolutely does nothing to help the strategy. Moving on is going to be Goaty. Goaty got some secret support. Fishborg Harpooner is a new card from the set that reveals itself in another water monster. You summon one of them and you discard the other. This is amazing for Goaty as it makes the deck a lot more consistent, allowing you to summon your level six monsters with ease. I think that it's really good that they got a card like that, but I'm still gonna put it in takes a good pilot. The problem with Fishborg Harpooner is that it requires a lot of resources and Fishborg Harpooner doesn't get you anything if it were to be discarded. That's huge in today's Yu-Gi-Oh! I think that this support is remotely in the right direction and does help with consistency, but unfortunately, in a format where you need as many cards as possible, this is counterproductive. Goblin Biker. Oh my God. I said that Goblin Biker was a stronger strategy. The good thing is that it is a really good, really cheap budget Yu-Gi-Oh deck, but in terms of support, it gets a new rank three monster that attacks directly, changes the battle position of a monster or negates its attack. It does get you a trap card that allows you to exceed summon into a monster on your opponent's turn, as well as attach cards to your monsters as material. But unfortunately in an arms race where Snake Eyes is leveling up, this deck seems to be middling. I'm gonna put this currently in takes a good pilot. I don't think that this deck is terrible by any means, but the support doesn't necessarily give it that oomph that it needs to be a lot stronger. Gold Pride. Now Gold Pride ass assinator. <laughs> Gold Pride Assassinator is technically an Earth Machine Yu-Gi-Oh card. Let's go, baby. Of course, it's a free summon when you have lower life points, but it also has a wrinkle allowing you to be able to banish a Gold Pride monster to get a token with the same level. Of course, it's gonna restrict you from doing anything except for summoning Gold Pride monsters. That'd be nice if Konami put it on some of the more broken cards. You know, restrictions on broken cards, Konami? Have you thought about doing that too? And then there's Gold Pride Annihilator that allows you to target one or two extra deck monsters, summon and destroy them. I think that these cards are actually insane, but as far as making Gold Pride a stronger deck, 
I'm going to put it in takes a good pilot. More or less, this doesn't really help gold pride with its problems. It's ultra dependent on the punk engine, which is a huge engine in itself. And because of this, it simply gets outclassed by cards you don't see coming. Overall, it's still a good Yu-Gi-Oh deck in the right hands, but that's the problem. Right hand. Holy gold pride is now all state, guys. Ash it. Ooh. Currently at the time of making this video, we only know one thing about Ash it the new fusion monster. The new Ashen fusion monster can't be destroyed by card effects. Also, your opponent can't target it with monster effects. And then if it's fusion summon, you can destroy all spell and trap cards on your opponent's side of the field. Also, if your opponent activates an effect on the field, you can send an Ashen card to the graveyard to be able to destroy that guard. Guys, I was completely hyped when I seen this card until I realized it requires three monsters. And granted, the field spell can turn your opponent's monsters into pyro, meaning that cards like super polymerization become crazy. What are the odds of that actually happening? Ashen is literally right here for me. We don't know the rest of the support, so I can't judge it harshly. I think that if the support does go in the correct way, this is a strategy that has a ton of potential. Ashen could be a natural counter to Snake Eyes. It also can be a deck that we all forget about, like the other TCG exclusives. Hey guys, y'all remember War Rock? Pepperidge Farm remembers. Lightsworn. Lightsworn is crazy guys i am cooking up a duel to show you guys how ridiculous light sworn is but the new cards are insane we talked about weiss being an archfiend monster but the real use of this card is that it allows you to get rid of dead light swords to the top of your deck mm, wolf police and get them into the graveyard which summons them to the field to set up your synchro plays there's also light sworn judgment dragon which adds judgment dragon and then there's the minerva synchro monster which allows you to be able to send light sworn cards from your deck to the graveyard and banish light sworn cards from your graveyard to set up punishment dragon holy jack i had to put this somewhere i think it's one of the best available now this may be a bold take but light sworn seems to have all of the tools that it needs to be able to genuinely compete i do worry a little bit about cards like bisqueels or even hand traps at times but come on, guys, it's a boomer. Let me live in it. Light Sworn could be in crazy good, especially with all the different variants you can play. Melodious. Some people thought that I was sleeping on Melodious. No, I know all about the one card combos that this deck has. I also know that it can summon a monster that's essentially a DD Crow for multiple monsters in your opponent's graveyard. I know that the new cards help a ton with consistency or not once per turn, and its new fusion monsters are crazy. I think that this deck is really good. While it doesn't put up any natural negates, it plays through a lot of hand traps. And to be honest, this may be one of the best pendulum decks since Super Heavy Samurai. It has that much potential. Melodious is the exact mix of what I would call a very strong, but also incredibly balanced deck. I really wish that Konami did this, where they made strategies that are really powerful, but not overbearing. Memento. Chad, is it just me or do you think of Mentos every time you hear the strategy? Memento is the other strategy from Legacy of Destruction that did get support. It is a strategy with tons of coolness to it. I mean, anytime they retrain Wretched of the Attic and Trihorn Dragon into monsters, you got my vote of approval. Unfortunately, this deck's cool. Nip, my friend. That's why it's copium. I think Mementos have a greater chance than competing than the third strategy we'll talk about from Valiant Smashers. But overall, this deck is way too fragile and the support doesn't help it enough. Now, Mermel does technically get support from that fish pork harpooner. It allows you to be able to discard a card <laughs> like Mermel Abyss Gun <laughs> to summon Megalo. <laughs> Bro, let me cook, let me cook, let me cook. You summon the Megalo, you make Draco Sack, you get two tokens. And you do what Cash Tira does with for, with less cards with a Draco second two tokens. I'm gonna go ahead and put this deck into Copium for now. I think one thing that we have to remember is that we just got our Fire King structure deck, so there is a potential that we get the Atlantean structure deck. And if Atlantean get more cards like Atlantean Nephthys and Atlantean Dragoons, you might be in for it because it'll be a perfect engine for Mermel and the perfect counter to Fire King, maybe. Reka. Now, I really want to hear what you guys have to say about Reka, but I've noticed that this deck is good for being able to mix into other strategies right now. Ogdotic, Alien, Arrow Mage, Sun Avalon. Those are just some strategies that come along. Oh, and Bee Trooper. You guys remember Bee Trooper? Unfortunately, I think that the disrupts and interruptions that this deck puts up 
isn't really good enough. I'm gonna put it in takes a good pilot. Right now at the current second, the Raker strategy doesn't seem to do enough. I love that it has one card combos and with future support, it will be a lot stronger though. Shining Sarcophagus. If you guys look at the Wikipedia page, it says that this set includes support for Silent Magician, Silent Swordsman, Gandor, and Gadget. It's this. This is pretty much a retrain of Yugi's cards using Sarcophagus. And if I had to say my first impressions about this, yeah, it's it's not good at all. It'll be a fun anime deck though. It, 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 Konami did good at that. I genuinely don't see this deck being any more powerful than what it is now. Though this strategy is connected to the infinite forbidden card, so it has a ton of upside, but for right now, wouldn't even touch it. Skull Servant. It got a new card called White Sworn, which is ironic because the White Sworn card works like Light Sworn. It can send cards off of your deck to the graveyard up to the number of Skull Servant cards in White Sworn, and then it can banish itself to summon Skull Servant. Yeah, that's still not enough. I'm sorry, Zarek, but the Skulls are not doing it here. These are one of those supports that you get to help out one of your fun Yu-Gi-Oh decks, but it doesn't do enough to make it a lot better. Tenpai Dragon. Everyone has an opinion about this deck. Either it's way too busted or it's trash. I think one of the biggest things about Tenpai Dragon is that it does exemplify the problem in Yu-Gi-Oh. The deck is ultra consistent at about 15 to 16 cards in the deck, meaning that you can play up to 24 hand traps if you wanted to. And that is what I would consider a real problem over everything else. I think Tenpai Dragon is going to be one of the best available Yu-Gi-Oh strategies. And my reasoning behind it is that we already know it gets stronger and infinite forbidden. The new cards are insane. So it looks like this is going to be one of those strategies that will continuously get supported, especially seeing that it alludes to it. It literally says Fire Dragon in a lot out of the cards. The deck is pretty good going first and going second. Valmonica. Holy. Valmonica is a deck that is built on being able to summon monsters and gain life points and take damage. I think that Valmonica is copium, but I'm going to go ahead and put it in takes a good pilot. For all we know, this may be the last bit of support that we will receive with Valmonica, and I think that it's not terrible. It's just not over the top. The Valmonica cards are way too much of a hindrance for you to be able to turn off your brain and play Yu-Gi-Oh effectively, but with the right playlet, I think it could be a successful deck. Also, normally in deck build sets, two of the three strategies are good. This is the second. Now, Voiceless Voice does get a lot stronger here. Sephira Dragon Deity not only allows you to gain more resources by drawing cards, but also can help you hand loop your opponent. We already know that this deck is one of the best available, but I'm gonna make a bold claim and say that this deck will only be really good. And the reason why is because the bulk of the support was in Phantom Nightmare the last set. This new support is not bad, but I think Blessings of the Voiceless Voice is the real MVP here. We already know that cards like Branded Regained is crazy. Not only does this card allow you to recycle your cards, it also acts like a Branded Regained summoning monsters for you. It's pretty good, but people are starting to catch on to Voiceless Voice. The jig is almost up. And lastly is Ubel. It got two new cards with Grave Squirmer being amazing at being able to cycle out Ubel to your field and Nightmare Throne essentially allowing you to search Ubel. Yo, 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 I'm gonna put it in really good. I think because the deck gets a lot more sticky, it actually realizes itself into a good deck. It also could be a pretty decent counter into decks like 10 Pie Dragon. I think that it is an above wise decision to pick up the U-Bell cards from Phantom Nightmare, as well as this set, because we know it has at least one more support card, possibly even more. But these are my thoughts on the strategies on Legacy of Destruction. I would say all the way up until has potential are strategies that you should pick up if you like what you see. Takes a really good pilot or the strategies you should pick up if you're a dedicated player. And Copium, I would not pick up unless it was an incredibly good deal or I'm using it to play with friends casually. If you want to see more amazing videos, be sure to check out these other ones and I'll catch you on the next one.